Would you stand with us tonight? Great looking crowd out tonight. It'll be dark by the time we leave. So no hurry tonight, right? <laughs> All night. All right, would you pray with us, please? Lord, Father, God, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to be here in your house, God. I ask that you will just move across this place, meeting the needs of your people. God, I pray that you will anoint this praise and worship, and I pray that you will accept our praise tonight. And God, I pray, that God, that you will just do what you come to do, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Get in and worship him tonight. There's no other life that I would rather live. There's a blessed time, it's coming, coming soon. It may be in the morning or in
Amen. 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 If our ushers would come, we're going to take up tonight's offerings, which goes straight to the building fund. It goes to making more parking right now, I believe. So I ask that you just give as given unto the Lord. Lord, Father, God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to give to your work, God, and give to what you are doing, God. And I ask, God, only what you've already said, that you bless this gift and bless the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Most everybody knows this song, Goodbye World, Goodbye. Let's sing it like we're fixing to leave out of here. I told all my troubles goodbye. of this world. They are not nothing to be compared to what's to come. Oh, you got a reason to shout. You've got a reason to be happy because one day and one day soon, we're going to go home and see the Lord. Oh, I can't wait. I'm sorry, that song always gets me happy. So, you may be seated. Um, by the way of announcements, I want to welcome the Men's Agape House 
We are proud and happy to have you. As always, give them a hand clap of praise. It's a pleasure to have them here tonight. So, let me find my spot. All right, church membership is now open. There is sheets on the desk in the foyer if you would like to become a member if you have not yet. The only requirements we have is that you be saved, that you are 18 years of age, and the third one slipped my mind. Oh, yes, been in here for three months. So, you, them requirements and that's it. Um, we would be more than happy to have you. Um, November the 11th, remember it's Veterans Day. If you know a veteran, and most of all of us do, shoot them a text, give them a call, tell them thank you. Because if it was not for them, you would not live in the freest, greatest nation on the face of this earth. Yes, we have our problems. Yes, we have our difficulties. But this nation is still the greatest. No service Wednesday night on the 24th. Everybody will be gathering with family, getting ready to go be a glutton on Thanksgiving. So spend some time with your family. Enjoy it. Don't take this holiday or any time you get to spend with family for granted. We also want to remind everybody that if you need expositors Bibles, if you need youth, the grow and learn Bibles, anything like that, see Brother Joey in the back. He can get one with you, show one to you or whatever. If you need one for Christmas gifts or just for family that might need one. Any other announcements, I guess we will make at another time. Um, choir. Would the choir come? we got a special treat for everybody tonight. The choir is going to come and sing for you. Jesus will outshine them all. And just think, when we get to heaven, his face is going to shine, outshine everything there. And, uh... Oh, what glory awaits me.
Did you enjoy that? Well, Brother Tristan Willard, would you come join us, please? Hey, I appreciate this young man. And tonight, he's going to give you a word of encouragement. Well, it's good living for the Lord, amen? Well, I'm finding my place here. Uh, Anybody that wasn't here this morning, I would strongly encourage you to go back and... uh, Listen to Pastor Steve's message. Done a wonderful job this morning. Uh, If you would, turn with me to Mark chapter 9. And this is a very familiar story in the Bible. Almost everybody knows it. But as I studied it, there's two verses that really, in the midst of it, that really stick out. And I see, seems that it's a place a lot of Christians struggle with. And if you would, verses 23 and 24. And Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou with mine unbelief. As believers, oftentimes we struggle with the belief that I think we should have. We know that we read all throughout the Bible and we know that Jesus is a healer and he can meet our each and every need. We know that we can we can go to him for everything. If we can believe it and it's in his will, he can do it. And oftentimes that's where we struggle. We let our problems in our life, our past... Um, maybe things that are going on right now in our life, we often let that get in the way and we think that uh, maybe what we're believing for ain't for us. We believe that uh, we're not good enough for that, that uh, we believe it for other people, but sometimes we don't believe that for ourselves. And as I stand up here, I want to encourage you to let that be your prayer, that you would ask him to help you with your unbelief. That he can, he can supply your every need and do anything that you believe upon him for. And just believe upon him. And nobody said the walk of faith was easy. They said we walk by faith and not by sight. And faith ain't always comfortable. Sometimes it requires stepping out of your comfort zone. And, you know, there's one major testimony that everybody knows in here and I know we use it a lot, but Sister Lynn has got one of the strongest testimonies there is. And it took faith to go through what she went through. And I believe she was praying the whole time, help me with my unbelief, because the bad doctor reports and everything else. It's easy to get down and tend to let the world and everybody else's voices, opinions get to you. So I want to encourage you to Just let that be your prayer. Help with my unbelief because if you can believe it and it's in his will, he will, he'll show you through. Amen. 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 That's true. I'm encouraged. I think we've all, we've all been to places where we've struggled to believe. We've struggled to truly sit back and believe that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. Because I know the Bible says that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or imagine. But sometimes do we believe it? I've seen God move in too many situations. I've seen him touch too many lives. 
And sometimes I still struggle. So that is something we need to pray for. Steph, will you come and bless them in song, please? Struggle is definitely something, because we're human, it's there. But I was thinking of Isaac this morning when he was talking about, in the song that she sings about laying my Isaac down. It not only took the faith of Abraham to know that God was going to supply a sacrifice, but while Isaac was laying there, what was going through his mind? Lord, I hope he's really listening to you, and I hope this is really in you. So sometimes we've just got to put our faith out there. And that's just out there. But God's good, and he's never one time let me down.
time. You know, there's a lot of times people find themselves on the bottom. There's a lot of times they don't have the strength to get up. And the world wants to tell you a lot of people or a lot of things what Jesus really is. But you know, when Jesus was here on earth and he was with his disciples, he looked at them and he asked, who do you say that I am? And they said, some say that you are John the Baptist. Some say that you are Elisha. And he said, no, but who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up. And he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, very good, and you would not know this unless it hadn't been revealed to you by my Father. You know, on the bottom is where we often find ourselves looking up. But I want you to know that no matter where you're at right now in life, no matter where you're at right now in your Christian walk, no matter what the world is dealing you right now, Jesus has already came down to you. Jesus has already walked this earth, and Jesus has already paid the price for anything and everything. And I can promise you, you haven't done anything to keep Him from you because He came to save anyone and everyone that will. would if you have a need tonight we'd like for you to bring them and we'd like to pray for you for them join in faith together join in faith and pray for whatever need it may be that you have would you come family will you come and help us pray please
Can you just lift your hands just a moment and close your eyes? Just get your mind upon the Lord. Father, we love you tonight. We're thankful, God, for the power of the Holy Spirit that we feel, that we sense. Lord, in this place tonight, God, we ask that you would continue to move upon every heart, every life, God, and every need. Lord, we just thankful for your presence tonight, Lord. We give you praise and we give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. He's worthy, amen. He's worthy to be praised. When I think about the Lord, well, it ought to make you respond when you think about the Lord, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor Brown, won't you come? Tristan, you bless me tonight, my man. Help thou now my unbelief. Proud of you. Great, great job. Appreciate the Lord tonight. He's so good to us. Thankful that God visits and shows up with his presence and 
just does great, great things. And it's your time. We say it a lot, but we mean it a lot. It's your time to present your need to the Lord when the power of God begins to move. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. Amen. I got a simple word tonight that, well, I had a study that kind of went on this week. And uh, about 3.30, which is about time I needed to get around to get ready for church, the Lord put something else in my heart. And uh, so we're going to... We're going to go that direction, and uh, I feel this is where he wants us to be. Open your Bibles to the great book of Galatians chapter number 1. Galatians chapter 1, a very familiar passage of Scripture. If there's any Scripture in the Bible that would sum up the whole gospel, the whole gospel, it would be verse number 4. We're about to read it. Galatians chapter 1. Verses number 3 through 5, the writing of Paul. And he would say, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever Amen. He gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us. Somebody needs to hear that he will deliver. He will deliver. Bow your heads and your hearts at this time. Father, again, we love you and we thank you, God, for your wonderful presence. Thank you, God, for your wonderful word. And I ask you, God, to help us tonight to deliver that which you put in our heart, Lord. God, I'm nothing without you. I can do nothing without you, Lord. But I need your spirit. I need your anointing, O oh God, to rest upon me. God, fill my heart and my mouth, God, with that which will do no violence to your word, to your gospel. And God, will make sure you get the praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I begin to look at this passage this afternoon... I, I, my, my, the question in my heart was, well, I mean, we already know that God will deliver. We already know that God will deliver. And, but I just felt strongly in my heart that God said, tell somebody that I will deliver. You see, maybe because there might be somebody in here that's tired of, they got a little, something that they're bound by, and they're tired of putting on that smile and coming to church every time a door is open. They need some help. I don't know who that individual is. I know what it's like to be bound. I know what it's like to have God deliver you from certain things. I, I know what it's like to be in a, in a bondage, and, 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 and everyone has their own testimony. But, but I know that as believers, there's times that we still deal with things. We still deal with things. There's still things in our flesh that we desire to be changed that literally has been kind of getting us down and it hinders our walk with the Lord. And I've come to tell somebody tonight that Jesus will still deliver you from whatever it is, whatever bondage that binds you tonight, whatever it is that's getting you down. I'm here to tell you that He will deliver you. It don't matter what you've done. It don't matter where you've been. Nobody is too far gone. Maybe you're watching tonight. I want you to know that nobody is too far gone. Anybody and everybody can be free from anything and everything. Let me just pause for a moment and tell you about a little story. About a story of a man that sat on the side of a rock cliff. And he would sit there on the sea and watch ships and stuff go by. Oh, I'm sure that he would holler out and curse at everybody that would go by. You see, because the reason that this man sat on the cliff is because he lived right there in the caves. His family had done kicked him out of town. His family was done with him. Society was done with him. The town wanted nothing to do with him. And they took him out and they chained him to the caves because this man was so bound by demon possession that the man of Gadarees was so strong he would even rip the chains out of the rocks but he sat out there naked and he would laugh and he would mock and he would do everything and everybody had done rode him off but there was one day that was different because he seen a boat coming 
that had a man in it named Jesus. Because, see, Jesus didn't write him off. Jesus knew that that man that was bound by the devil was somebody's daddy. He knew that that was somebody's brother. He knew that that was somebody's son. He knew that that was somebody's uncle, somebody's nephew. And Jesus had a reason. He had a purpose for him. And Jesus didn't write him off. Jesus came to him, and he sat there, and God and Jesus delivered him, and he, went, he left him. He was... When he found him he was out of his mind naked and when he left him he was clothed and in his right mind don't tell me you're too far gone Jesus can and will deliver you from anything and everything amen glory to God he there's nothing that God can't do there's no chain that he can't break and there's no reason the Bible the gospel leaves you and I without an excuse to live under any type of bondage. When we do it God's way, when we understand God's prescribed order of victory, when we understand that it's all about not what I do, but it's about what Christ has already done for me up on the cross, and when we understand that and go God's way, then we will realize that, yes, I don't have an excuse. I don't got to be bound by a lying tongue. I don't got to be bound by nicotine. I don't got to be bound by a sip of alcohol. I don't got to be bound by a gossiping tongue. I don't be got, got to be bound by a glutton or fork or whatever it is. I don't got to be bound by anything that hinders my flesh that is a drawback to my flesh that God is not pleased with. Right. I don't got to. I don't got to. No sir, no ma'am. We don't have an excuse not to be delivered from this. He says that he might deliver us. That word deliver means to rescue from the power of. Not a removal. Not a removal of it. But it's a rescue from the power of. Rescue from the power of this present age. You see the problem with society that we live in now. Man thinks that he can fix his own problems. Yeah. Man thinks that they can fix their own problems. Man thinks that he can deliver himself by education by good works, by money, by wisdom, by influence. And you know what? All of that is fine except for one thing. It will lead you to nothing but failure. Yeah, you're going to fall. You're going to fail. Not one person, and I say this respectfully, but I mean every word of it, not one person has ever been delivered from sin by Islam, by Buddhism, by Shinoism, by Catholicism, by Confucian. Confucianism, it's confusing anyway, that's all it is. Mormonism, no one has ever been delivered by psychology. There ain't but one thing that will deliver, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Because it is there that your faith must remain if you want the power of the Holy Spirit to move on the inside and to begin to change you. My, my, this gospel again. When we understand that, you and I, there is no reason why we have to be bound. No reason at all. No believer has to live in bondage anymore. And you know what? I, I guarantee you that if we would, uh, that, you know, we, we all got little things, that little hang-ups and struggles that we deal with from time to time. But there is sometimes that we have them strongholds that we just can't let go of or strongholds that we are trying to let go of, but yet they got such a hold on us, we just can't actually grasp a hold of it. I'm here to tell you tonight, if you'll put your faith in what Christ has already done, don't be up on the cross and believe him for it daily. That chain will fall. That chain will break. You don't got to be bound by it no more. No more. No more. No more because he came to deliver us. Now, we understand. We under, we're going to go through it again because I know it's elementary, but we got to always continue to come back to the foundation. We, we will never get away from it. You and I, we understand the fact that you and when we were born from a woman, if you're in the flesh, you was. Every man that was born of a woman was born with a nature to sin. 
That, that's why we desire to do the things of sin, because it is our nature. It is our nature. We don't know any different. We don't know any different. That's why we have the problems in this world. It is because of sin. Now, if you go sit down and talk to a psychologist, they're going to tell you your problem is, uh, uh, you know, uh, somebody was mean to you in school, you know, 50 years ago or whatever it was, or your problem is your mama, your daddy, or whatever it is. No, no, the problem is sin. That's what the problem is. It comes down to one big, short word of sin. Sin has always been man's problem. But we're born with this nature to sin that bends us towards sin, that pulls us and have a desire to do the things of, of sin, to produce sin. And, 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 and what, once we understand the mechanics of salvation, of the fact that what happened the moment that I said yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit takes me, baptizes me into the person of Christ and the moment that happens what he done was is he broke the power that the sin nature had in my life right. I don't got to serve the sin nature no more right. he's not calling the shots anymore he did not take remove the sin nature from me but he made him to be dormant that way I don't have I don't I don't have to be ruled and reigned by him I don't have to obey the things of sin I don't have to obey the things of the flesh. Why? Because I have I've been baptized into the person of Christ and I've been raised up in a newness of life and here's what happened. He has given me a new power source. A new power source. I, you'll get tired of hearing it, but I, I got it. Until I come up with something else, I got to keep saying it. The, well, I can change it up a little bit. I used to tell a story about my about my Sadie dog that me and Pastor shared there the last four or five years of her life. Uh, she is no longer with us anymore, but now I can move on, and I got a new one now. He likes the mouse. Chief likes the mouse. He really does. And the other day he got he ca- he caught his first one by himself. And he was just as proud as can be. He loves it. And go out and he, he wants to look under everything for a mouse. He's a good mouser. But he's a dog, he ain't a cat. You know, he, he, he's a dog. He, he barks like a dog. Scratches like a dog. He does everything like a dog. Even though he's a mouser, he don't, he don't have no other traits of a cat because cats are naturally mousers. In order for him to be a cat, something supernatural would have to take place because he was born to be a dog. And it's really no different than you and I. You see, in order for you to do things that are pleasing to the Lord, to live a life as a Christian ought to live, you're being asked to do something totally opposite of what you were born to do. Wasn't born to do that, Brother Mikey. So in order for that to happen, yes, something supernatural does have to take place. And that something supernatural is the power of the Holy Spirit moving in, becoming a brand new power source for me, and shutting the door on the sin factory, putting a chain and a lock on it, Give me this power source. Now I have not only the desire to do things that are right and pleasing to God, but also have the power to do the things that are right and pleasing to God. And I have the power because I understand the placement of my faith. If you don't understand the placement of your faith, you only have the desire and you don't have the power. Because if you look for power outside of faith in Christ, you will go back to willpower. And willpower won't get you nowhere. Can I get an amen on that one? 
Because willpower is not how power. But when I understand the placement of my faith, which must be in who Christ is and what he did for me up on the cross. Now, let me just pause right there. Why is that so important? Because the power of the Holy Spirit, this new power source that I now have access to be plugged up to, I, have, I, I, have, I need to be plugged up to this power source that will give me the ability to live the life that God expects me to be free from sin, free from all bondage. In order for me to, to stay plugged up to that, God says that I must. I must keep my faith in who Christ is and what he did for me up on the cross because the Holy Spirit will not, he will not work outside that sacrifice. When it comes to helping you live for God, he won't do it. He won't. He never has. And he never will. He will do all things that are pleasing to Christ. He will testify of him. He will glorify Christ. And he's going to take of that which is Christ and he's going to give it unto us. You see, we must take advantage of the power source of the Holy Spirit if we want to be free from the bondages in our life. Now, let me, do, let me stop right there. Yes, we can be free. The moment we said yes to Jesus, the power of sin is broken. It's broken. No longer producing sin in my life. But why is there still some things in my life that God's not pleased with? That's because there's still some things in our flesh that was left behind that has not yet been surrendered. Now let me tell you something. I appreciate so much the testimony of Sister Renee because she said Wednesday night when she got saved, God delivered her from everything. Boom. And God does that. And sometimes God doesn't do that. Sometimes he will deliver us from some, and there's some things that you're going to have to believe God. You're going to have to walk that walk of faith a little while. Right. You're going to have to trust God for it. Just because you don't get delivered something, because you come down to an altar and ask God to deliver it, don't, that don't mean he's not a deliverer. That's right. Sometimes we might need to go back to what Brother Tristan told us tonight, help thou my unbelief, God, because right. nothing is impossible with you. So let's, let, let, we, we, need, we need to realize that tonight as well, that God can and God, he will deliver. But here's the thing. We got to stay connected to the power source. If we're going to live for God, if we're going to do that which is pleasing to God, we got to stay connected to the power source. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It ain't got there. I'm talking about what happened the moment that you said yes to Jesus. So you can go back to Romans chapter 8 and verse number 11. If Joy can bring it up, I want to read it together because this is the power source that we need. Not talking about the baptism. And I'm not even talking about the laying on of hands. People have gotten caught up for manifestations. I, 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 if I can just get to this revival, this preacher, I'll let him lay hands on me and, and, he'll, and God will deliver me that. Well, you know what? There's nothing wrong with laying hands. We still do that. That's scripture to do that. But let me tell you something. If, if, if you come up here expecting me or anybody else to pray for you, knowing that God's going to deliver you, you don't need to look at me. You might as well keep your seat. I can't deliver anybody. No other man can. Only your faith in Christ is what's going to deliver you from the power and the bondage of sin. Nothing else. No other man can do that. So you know what? Well, there's people that could save their money. For driving thousands of miles to get to revival, to have a certain person lay hands on them? They can sit at home. Because there's no delivering power in a certain man. But here's the power source we need. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Now listen, we know that he does. If you said yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the person of Christ shuts down the divine nature or the sin nature and implants a divine nature on the inside of us. And that divine nature is what Peter tells us, what he calls it, is this new power source. So here's what he is. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, and if you are a believer, he dwells in you, 
He that raised Christ up from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth, that continues to dwell in you on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. This is the power source that you and I need. Because the same spirit that raised Jesus up from the dead that, that, that give us an empty tomb is the same spirit that lives inside of you and is that spirit that will quicken your mortal bodies because and to show you how to live for God, to show you that you don't got to be bound by anything no more. That's right. You don't got to. You don't got to. And you know what else he will do? We don't got to have a preacher to tell us what's, what God ain't pleased with us in our life. The scripture even says that, you know, you don't really got to desire a man to teach you. And that don't mean that there's no need for a teacher. It means that you don't got to have somebody beside you 24-7 telling you what's right and what's wrong. Because the Holy Spirit on the inside is the one that's going, hey, let's talk about this. You don't need to do that no more. You don't need to go there no more. You don't need to hang out with that one no more. I'm not pleased with this. You see what happens and the reason is if we don't let we don't surrender things to the Lord and allow God to change and allow God to deliver and seek Him out to, and ask Him to deliver us, what is going to happen is it's going to wind up hurting our witness. Not to mention, our walk with the Lord is going to be hindered. But you don't want to hurt your witness. Because somebody is looking at you. Somebody needs to see Jesus in your life. You don't want to hurt your witness. You don't want to do that. But the power source is available to you and to me. It's available to you and to me. I know it's easy sometimes that we get locked up and we get we get to thinking that there's there's no way I'll ever get delivered from something. I just soon put on my smile and come to church and let everybody think it's all right. That's not God's plan. It's not God's plan. So he desires to deliver. And he came, gave himself for us. So that he might deliver us. So that he might deliver us. It's very important that you and I understand that. We got to understand that. And again, I don't know. I don't know what it is. You and as it is, as an individual goes for it, goes for it. I don't know what that is. That is something that is between you and God. Because see, there's some things and sometimes that we have hangups in our life that we really, really struggle with, and that's really a big hang-up that not even the one closest to us, like our spouse or anybody else, don't, they don't know about. They don't know about. I just come to remind us tonight, nothing new. If you'll hang on, keep your faith in Christ and what he did for you upon the cross, the power of the Holy Spirit will quicken that mortal body. He will be that power source for you. He will help you to be a to, to, to be an overcomer and deliver you from whatever it is that your hang up is. Whatever it is that God's dealing with you about. I don't know. But I know that God does. And God's already dealing with your heart. He already he deals with our hearts in times that we, we you know, nobody else knows about. God's dealing with us about certain things, certain issues. Certain issues. God knows what it is. Even the secret things. God knows about them. He's not hiding them from God. If you're convicted about it, that's because he's revealing it to you. So he already knows about it. You can't hide nothing from God. Nothing at all from God. But God will deliver. He will deliver. Thank you, Lord. Would you stand with me tonight? I know I have no great revelation. Brother Jeff is coming. Actually, I do. I do have a great revelation of God's word. God will deliver through the power of what Christ did upon the cross. That's why we preach Christ and him crucified. Not just for the sinner, but for the saint too. 
Would you bow your heads tonight? Heavenly Father, I thank you again for this word. I thank you, Lord, for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. I ask you, God, to help us, Lord, to continue. God, to be led by you, Lord, to be sensitive to your spirit. I ask you, God, to reach down and deal with every heart of every person tonight, God. God, you know what we deal with, Lord, and I I don't know who the message was for, but I know that, God, you've showed up to remind somebody to not give up. Not give up. Don't throw their faith in. God, just to know, to understand that, Lord, you're still there. You're still there to walk with them. God, if they'll just keep walking, if they'll just keep trusting, if they'll just keep believing that, God, you will. You will deliver them, God. It's a promise. It's a promise in your word that you will deliver, and we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to open the altars up tonight. I'm not going to point nobody out. I'm just going to open up the altars for anybody and everybody. This is between you and the Lord. It ain't between me and nobody else or you and anybody else. It's between you and the Lord tonight. God knows what you need. You've been dealing with something? Why don't you come talk to the Lord about it? Come talk to the Lord about it. Let's spend a few moments before we go out this week. Let's spend a few moments around the altar taking our knees to the Lord. God knows exactly where you're at. God knows exactly what you're dealing with. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, deliver tonight. Deliver tonight. God, you're greater. You're greater than any drugs. You're greater than any alcohol. You're greater than nicotine. God, you're greater than anything in this life that binds us down. That we believe. That we know, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My God. Praise the Lord. Don't throw your faith in. Keep believing. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We 
We just, uh, you know, it's an, again, we say it a lot, but you're, it's an encouragement when you show up and people see. And your testimony of what God can do is encouraging to one to another. But God is able to deliver. God is able to deliver tonight. Nobody has to be bound by anything. Amen. It's been a good day in the Lord. It's been a good day in the Lord. We've seen people saved and, uh, to this morning. And we, I tell you, it's just been a great, great day in the Lord. And we trust that you have a great week. Time has changed, so uh, it's definitely dark when we get out on Sunday night, so parents, watch your, watch your children, and uh, in the parking lot, please keep them with you, and uh, so we don't, so nobody gets hurt out in the parking lot leaving, and uh, we just trust that you, again, you have a great week, may God bless you and your family, and uh, be have just a great, safe week. All right, Brother Will, would you pray and dismiss us from this service?